What's going on guys? It's your boy. Welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be starting a brand new watch series. Um, today we're going to be watching um, the first of, I think, a trilogy. I'm going to be totally honest. I don't know really how these movies work, but we're going to be watching the Planet of the Apes films, the most recent three that have came out. Um, the Rise of the Planet of the Apes, the Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, and the War for the Planet of the Apes or something like that. Um, I'm incredibly excited about this. I think that these movies are technically a trilogy, but I'm not entirely sure how it works. So uh, I'm excited to try this. This. What, 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 what? Oh, it's Watch Liz Wednesday. I'll add it to the list. But yeah, so like I said, I'm not entirely sure if this is actually a trilogy or if these are just three congruent movies that all exist in the same universe. But um, we're going to be starting off with the first one that came out in 2011. Um, I haven't watched any of these movies before. And I'm going to be totally honest. These movies have never really seemed like my type of thing. Like I've always been kind of like concerned because as far as I know, I think that these are mostly movies that like take place in like a futuristic like world where like the monkeys have taken over or something. And that's never really seemed that interesting to me. But that being said, um, I am really excited for the upcoming kingdom of the planet of the apes i believe is the new one that's coming out soon and um, i believe that movie takes place 500 years past where these original movies are from so i'm excited to see kind of the transition from how these movies are to how that one is when that one comes out so um we're going to be watching the rise of the planet of the apes today and um for people who are like me haven't seen them and want to watch along um, this series is going to be a little weird on streaming services because the first one is on Hulu slash Disney Plus. I don't know if you need to have a Hulu subscription now or if everything is on Disney Plus, but I know I can find it on my Plus Disney Plus. If not, it's going to be on Hulu. And then the second two are both on HBO Max. So that being said, I'm going to go pop that on, watch the first one. Like I said, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, the one that came out in 2011, and I will be back with my uh, instant reaction and review. All right, that was really good. I really liked that movie. Um, So for one, I want to kind of go ahead and start off by talking about, I think that this movie is supposed to be like a prequel to the really early ones that came out back in uh, like the 70s, I believe. They had like six or seven of these movies, or it might have just been four. Um, But either way, back in the 70s, they had the first Planet of the Apes movies. And I believe in those, it was what I was kind of expecting this movie to be, where it's like, it was just a bunch of talking monkeys and like the entire world is like basically, what if Earth, but monkeys, essentially. Um, And this movie kind of does a good job of kind of setting up up how the monkeys gained that intelligence because that was something I never really like thought about was like oh this is a world where the monkeys have actually taken over humanity and stuff like that I always thought that it was kind of like the monkey it was kind of like a what if scenario where it's like what if we never evolved and we were still like the apes or whatever but the apes could kind of you know gained that kind of like human like tendencies and natures to kind of like build buildings and build skyscrapers and build this community and have like politics and stuff like that and uh it's always been really interesting to me how these movies worked so um watching this one was actually really helpful because now everything that i've been confused about with all of these movies just practically got answered um i really liked the human side of this story i think that james franco is really interesting in this i like some of the stuff that they're doing with um all the human characters kind of being like really selfish and over the top the neighbor gets ticked off about literally everything, which here's the thing. I understand like, you know, a monkey comes into the backyard and is trying to play with your kids. That's terrifying. You're gonna you're gonna be freaked out by that. But oh my god, the scene where um the old man, um, James Franco's dad's character or whatever, gets into a car and is like crashing into a bunch of stuff. It is so obvious that the dad is like about to have like a seizure or he's about to have like a panic attack or like he's there's something medically wrong with him. And the fact that he's just yelling at him and he's giving him a really hard time is like almost like cartoonishly evil. And so that was really weird to me. But that being said, like it works, it makes sense. But I just think that it does like such a good job showcasing kind of like some of the worst sides of humanity. And then on top of that, they also have like the big CEO character in this who is like a money hun hungry person. He doesn't really care about some of the side effects of the stuff that he's doing. He's like, if it can make me money, I'm gonna do it. And so um, I like that they kind of show that in this humanity is kind of like at the fault of their own downfall. Like eventually if the monkeys end up taking over, I think that that's what happens. Um, it's going to be because these humans decided, okay, we're going to do this animal testing. We're going to use this like practical drug that they don't really know what is going to happen if they use it. And they're just going to continue to use it over and over again because they don't care. It makes them money. And um, I think that this movie does such an interesting job of setting up the future movies as well as just being its own standalone movie because all of the stuff with like the virus where it's like, yeah, you can give these monkeys this medicine or whatever and it does really incredible stuff for them and it does a good job of expanding their brains doesn't necessarily mean that that'll translate well to humans. And I think that they're doing a really interesting job of kind of like starting that um, in this. And uh, I really, really like that stuff. 
Um, I think that the character of Caesar is really great. I think the fact that we kind of like see him as a very young child growing up into, a, you know, being a very like well-developed boy. The fact that they like quickly kind of like transfer through his childhood years was really cool. And I really like the fact that like James Franco had this like fatherly figure and was kind of trying to raise him like a kid. But obviously because he's a monkey, you can't train him like a child would be trained. trained. And um, I really liked all of the story with that. I think that the stuff with James Franco trying to be a father and it not really working entirely well was interesting. I think that the entire like family dynamic there with James Franco being somebody who's so like deep into his work that he's like, I got to do this, whatever makes things work. And um, the fact that he's testing experimental drugs on his father because he's that like confident in himself is interesting. And um, I like it because James Franco's character isn't necessarily someone who's good. And I like when like the protagonists of movies and TV shows are people who are like, I, I, I usually would refer to them as like wild card players where like they're doing stuff because it benefits themselves and like they also think that they're being a good person by doing it but like as we can see some of the side effects and stuff like that on his father um kind of end up being really really bad so um that entire stuff was interesting. Like I said, I really liked a lot of the human stuff. Um, I think that Tom Felton plays a really great villain in this. I'm not gonna lie. Um, Tom Felton does a really good job of playing assholes. Like, a lot of the, the roles that he has done uh, since, you know, his his uh, Harry Potter days have all been, like, pretty shitty people. Like, the character who he plays in, uh, what's it called? The uh, Flash TV show was also, like, just, like, a, a dick. And I think that he just plays a dick really well. So Tom Felton was fun in this. James Franco was fun in this. I think that all of the actors who uh, showed up in this were pretty solid. I think that Andy Serkis, I could be incorrect about this. I'm like 99% confident. These are the movies where Andy Serkis does like the mocap stuff. And he does all the like facial expressions and everything for Caesar. And um, he absolutely crushes it. There are a lot of very heartbreaking scenes that I feel like would not work without somebody who's doing as well in the mocap mo suit as he is because a lot of the scenes where he's locked up and he's put in prison for the first time and he feels abandoned by his father um you can like see just like the emotional like pain and suffering that he's going through in there and then on top of that whenever he starts to like rise up and he gets these other apes to kind of team up with him um he just has so much like confidence courage and just like so much like rage and i think that they do such an interesting job of portraying that and it is really, really impressive. This movie came out in 2011, but the CGI, the graphics and everything are like significantly better than movies that are coming out like nowadays. Like, I feel like this is significantly better than the Kong um, versus, wait, what was it? Godzilla versus Kong? No, Godzilla x Kong, the new empire that just came out. Like that movie has a lot of kaiju monsters and like the main characters are all a bunch of CGI characters. But like the CGI in this 2011 film, Loki looks better. I think that the gorillas look incredible. Um, the way that they interact with like real life things that are there really interesting obviously i don't know how much of the stuff is real there but like whenever they're interacting with like james franco's character and stuff like that it's all really really well done and really really impressive and i really loved it it feels very real very tangible um but yeah overall i had a really good time with this movie i really liked it um the scene where caesar speaks for the first time that was breathtaking the build up to it um that was something that like kind of caught me off guard for this movie because like I didn't realize this was like a prequel so like for me when i think planet of the apes i think this is a movie with talking monkeys so when like they weren't talking and they were like doing sign language and stuff like that and they were like starting to learn how to communicate i was like there's gonna be like a really big moment where he talks for the first time isn't it and then like there's a scene where um tom felton's character is kind of like being terrible to him and he says no and like that's it but it's such a big moment and literally everybody just kind of like freaks out and like it's just like and they seem like mortified and it's great. And I loved the entire build up to that scene. I love that entire execution of that scene. I think it is one of the most like chilling lines of dialogue I have seen in a really, really long time. And I, I loved it. I thought it was really, really good. Um, another thing that I like about this movie, it's unironically a cautionary tale about animal testing and animal cruelty, because um, I feel like there's a couple of like movies and short films that do a really good job showcasing, you know, animal testing is bad. Don't do anything to, uh, you know, experiment on animals. It's really bad. They should never do like live tests like this on anything. And um, the fact that they're doing these live testing on apes or whatever, and it backfires horribly is like unironically teaching you hey, maybe don't do animal testing, which I think is just like a funny like takeaway from this movie. Um, but yeah, that being said, really big fan of this movie. I thought it was great. If I had to give it a rating on a scale of, you know, one to 100, like I would with a typical movie that I'm reviewing, 
Um, I would give this one a solid like 92 out of 100. I think that almost everything about this movie works really well for me. The way that it sets up the virus potentially spreading um, and going airborne with like the pilot at the end, really interesting. And um, I'm very excited to see where these movies go from here. Because like I said, I believe the next one is called The Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. So I think that that's going to be more like the gorillas are officially taking over. No, 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 and I'm expecting no, 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 a couple of more of them to be no, 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 speaking in the next movie, which I'm excited about. No, 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 but um, yeah. No, 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 no. Back at it again, but that's a relevant flow. So smooth, they calling me Mr. Elegant. Like an elephant, I got a long nose. Like a president, I've got a few hoes. Swift with a stutter, I'm smooth like butter. Don't see it coming when I slip undercover. Like a big dog, but I don't bite. I'm still a big broad, I'd win that fight. Come match you and I knock out your l l lights. That being said, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this video here. Thank you guys so much for coming by and checking it out. I love and appreciate you guys so much for watching. And if you liked it, feel free to like and subscribe. I will hopefully see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Bow. Bow. Bow.